Okay, so in the last video, we were talking about the difference between clinical forensic psychology and experimental forensic psychology. And I said that we were going to talk about three additional fields as well, um, forensic science, criminology, and criminal justice. And I want to talk about these because there is sometimes there's overlap between these fields, um, but there is often confusion about what these different fields are as disciplines and um, they're often confused with forensic psychology. So let's talk about forensic science first. So forensic science is very different than forensic psychology. Forensic science is the application of the traditional sciences to identifying the cause and nature of a crime. So we're talking about um, using biology, chemistry, anthropology, those types of traditional bench sciences as opposed to social science to identify, um, you know, uh, the cause and nature of a crime and also hopefully um, to help identify the perpetrator. Um, so we're all for familiar with uh, forensic science to a certain extent um, from TV. Um, there, uh, of course, is a lot of misrepresentation on TV, but basically... Um, and there's more information on Canvas, by the way, about forensic science, but um, you have people who are trained to go out and collect evidence. Those are crime scene uh, technicians who will go out and process a crime scene, and there are very specific procedures for doing that. It's very systematic. It's very careful, very organized. And then once that's back in the laboratory, it's processed um, for analysis. It's analyzed. And there are different procedures for that, and that is typically um, done by a different group of professionals. Um, so we're talking about firearm and tool mark identification, question document examination, right, looking at forgeries and signatures and things like that. Personal identification, looking at um, forensic dentistry, looking at, at, at identifying remains, uh, crime scene processing, various types. So there's a lot of... Um, different areas of forensic psychology of course blood typing uh, hair fiber analysis dna right semen analysis um, all of these things uh, fall under the realm of forensic science if you are interested in being a forensic scientist you probably should not be majoring in psychology or criminal justice you should probably be majoring in biology or chemistry or something like that um, so that is what forensic science is. Now, it is important to note that we do have a section in this course on forensic science, and you might be asking why that is. The reason is, is because um, the analysis and interpretation of forensic evidence is often, um, you know, comes into, well, its interpretation is subject to human biases. Let me put it to you that way. So just for example, there's an entire field of research on fingerprinting and um, bias in interpretation of fingerprint evidence. And there's even bias in, in, the, in the interpretation of DNA evidence. So um, on Canvas, there's um, a section um, about forensic science, and there's a link to a video um, called The Real CSI, which is a frontline documentary about forensic science. Um, and it's definitely required watching. So um, that's what forensic science is, and, and it is a part of this course insofar as investigative decision-making is concerned. All right, so now that we've talked about forensic science, let's talk about the remaining two fields, criminology and criminal justice. So criminology is the study of the criminal mind and the determinants of criminal behavior. And when I say the determinants of criminal behavior, I mean why do people become criminals, right? What are the biological um, antecedents of criminal behavior or what are the social factors, race, poverty, that might lead someone to become a criminal? Um, so criminology is a very multidisciplinary field drawing on psychology and sociology. Increasingly, it's also drawing on biology and neuroscience. So for example, there are neuroscientists neuropsychologists who are looking at brain scans of psychopaths or brain scans of pedophiles to determine if there are you know structural differences or or chemical imbalances in their brain or genetic differences 
that would lead some people to become psychopaths or pedophiles. Um, so that's what criminology is. Again, it's, it's broadly defined. It's the study of the criminal mind and how and why people become criminals. And of course, ultimately, we're, we're interested in preventing people from becoming criminals. All right. So that is criminology. And then another kind of related field is criminal justice. At Montclair State, there's a justice studies department, which is essentially criminal justice. But criminal justice is the study of the criminal justice system from a sociological perspective. Um, at least that's the way I think about it. It examines trends in the justice system as well as the effects of procedural and criminal law on the justice system. So really what criminal justice is as a, as a social scientific discipline is it's an analysis of the justice system from a much broader systems perspective using kind of a sociological approach. And of course, you know, in psychology, we tend to focus on individual behavior in sociology, the emphasis tends to be on groups or systems. So looking at the criminal justice as a system, does it work? Why does it work? Why does it not work? How can we improve it from a systems perspective? That's going to be the realm of criminal justice. So again, it's looking at the justice system with a much broader lens. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, in 2007, the state of New Jersey outlawed the death penalty, right? Um, and everyone who was on death row in New Jersey, their sentence was commuted to life in prison without per the possibility of parole. So one of the major um, kind of reasons for the death penalty, one, proponents often point to it's a deterrent. It's a det it's deterring effect on violent behavior. And so... We assume that that's one reason, you know, that's one reason we have the death penalty is it deters violent crime. And that's an empirical question, isn't it? Does the death penalty deter violent crime in the general population? Does it discourage violent crime? Um, the research seems to indicate no, by the way. But if you wanted to study it, one thing you might do is you might look at the rate of violent crime in New Jersey prior to the abolishment of the death penalty in the state and then look at violent crime after abolishment of the death penalty in the state. So you're right. So you're looking at violent crime before the death penalty was abolished and you're looking at violent crime after the death penalty was abolished to determine if a change in this law um, has had any effect on violent behavior in the state. That's an empirical question and that's the type of question that you might see from a criminal justice researcher. Um, so the effects of different laws, the effects of um, procedural justice and system changes on the justice system um, all fall in the realm of criminal justice. All right. So in this lecture, just to kind of summarize, we've talked about psychology broadly. We've talked about forensic psychology, clinical forensic psychology, experimental forensic psychology. Um, we've talked about... Um, forensic science, criminal justice, and criminology. So on your first exam, your first quiz, I am gonna, you know, I will expect you to kind of be able to distinguish between these different fields. If I give you a description of somebody and what they do for a living, you should be able to tell me if they're a criminologist or a clinical forensic psychologist. Okay, and, and this is in addition to reading chapter one in your text, all right? So I hope that you've enjoyed the lecture.